Hello Grade 7s, it's Helen here and that means it's Natural Sciences. Today we're going to be focusing on the topic of the greenhouse effect. Now maybe you've heard your parents or on the news or other people talking about the greenhouse effect and you know that apparently it's bad. All right, so let's learn about the greenhouse effect today so that you can contribute knowledgeably and scientifically to debates about the greenhouse effect and things like global warming and climate change. You want to be an expert? Then sit with me for another 15 minutes and you're going to be an expert when you leave here today. Right, so we learned in our last lesson that fossil fuels play a very important part in the way the world works. And it would be wonderful if we just had advantages of using these fuels to make our electricity and all our energy. That would be great. But unfortunately, as we have learned over the hundreds of years of using fossil fuels, a major disadvantage of burning fossil fuels is pollution. And the pollution has accumulated it and that means it's got bigger and bigger and the problem has got worse and worse and worse over time. And we are now sitting with something called an enhanced greenhouse effect. And now you might be saying, whoa, cool it Helen, you told us we were learning about the greenhouse effect, now it's become the enhanced greenhouse effect, what's going on here? So let's start right from the very beginning, okay? Let's talk about the word greenhouse. Do you know what a greenhouse is and how a greenhouse works? So we forget about energy and fuel and everything. Let's become gardeners. A greenhouse is a structure that is built usually made out of glass, but sometimes out of carbon fiber or even plastic. And what we do is we build the structure and it is basically a sealed structure. And inside the greenhouse, we grow our plants. Now, why? Why would we want to grow the plants in the greenhouse? Why would we go to the expense of building a greenhouse when we can grow plants anywhere, outside, in the soil? So what's, what's the deal with greenhouses? Well, first of all, particularly in certain parts of South Africa and other parts of the world, it gets very cold in winter. And many of our plants, specifically our vegetable plants, don't like the cold. They can't cope in the cold. Frost gets to them and they die. Now that's a problem if we as farmers want to keep uh, our production of tomatoes going throughout the whole year. But we can't in winter because frost kills the tomatoes. So we build a greenhouse because that way we can control the temperature inside the greenhouse. And what happens is the sunlight can shine through the glass and we can allow the temperature inside the greenhouse to increase. While outside it is cold, inside it's lovely and warm and our tomatoes are not affected by the frost or the ice and so our tomatoes will grow in winter. We have little windows that we could open if it becomes too hot inside the greenhouse and we can allow some of the heat to escape. So the greenhouse allows us to trap heat inside a structure to allow us to grow our plants. So that's the greenhouse. Now what is, let's extend it now to the greenhouse effect. If you think about it, our earth is like one ginormous greenhouse. How so? Well, you've heard of something called the atmosphere. The atmosphere, and you've learned about it in lower grades as well, the atmosphere is a sphere of different gases that surround our planet and of course help us to breathe because our atmosphere contains oxygen, helps plants to photosynthesize because the atmosphere contains carbon dioxide, all wonderful. And, and we're like in this little greenhouse because the sun 
sun's rays move through the atmosphere just like they moved through the glass of the greenhouse. It moves through the atmosphere, bringing heat to the earth. Now, some of that heat reflects off the earth's surface back into space. But our atmosphere, and in particular, certain gases in the atmosphere make some of that heat reflect back down to earth, which means although we feel cold at night or cold in winter and a lot warmer during the day or warmer in summer, whilst there might be small temperature changes, overall the temperatures on earth don't fluctuate or change very much and that is what allows light life to happen on earth. So our gases in the atmosphere are called greenhouse gases. They're natural. They help to control the earth's temperature and life on earth would not be possible without that greenhouse effect. Now if I told you that one of the most important greenhouse gases is carbon dioxide, would that help you to start thinking about what we refer to when we talk about an enhanced greenhouse effect. Think about it. When we burn fossil fuels, in that uh, burning process or combustion process, what are we sending up into the atmosphere? We're sending up a lot of carbon dioxide. So if we're sending up more carbon dioxide, we're going to be increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. It's like you go to bed in summertime and you've only got one cover over you. But as the season progresses and becomes winter and becomes cold, you put a blanket on and then another blanket in the middle of winter because those blankets help to insulate you and keep you warm. Now what in effect we're doing as we are burning fossil fuels is we are putting extra blankets around the earth. We are pumping out more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and we're causing the atmosphere to keep the heat more and not reflect that heat back out into the atmosphere as much as it would if it weren't for all this extra carbon dioxide. So what is happening is a natural greenhouse effect is being made, uh, it's being enhanced or something extra is happening because we're putting more carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. It's like putting an extra blanket on the earth. We're insulating the earth more and that means that the temperature on earth is going to increase and increase and increase. Now, we didn't notice this a hundred years ago because well, there weren't as many uh, molecules of carbon dioxide out there in the world and we hadn't built up to such a level where we could feel or see the impact of climate change or global warming. But now we know that it is a real, real problem. So let's talk our way through this enhanced greenhouse effect. You need to understand that the natural greenhouse effect is something natural and we actually wouldn't be able to live on earth without this nice insulating blanket around us. But if we make the blanket too thick, if we increase the amount of greenhouse gases, we have the enhanced greenhouse effect. So when we enhance something, let's explore that word a little bit more. What I'm doing when I underline words and draw circles and squares around words is I'm enhancing those words. I'm emphasizing them so that you pay specific attention to them. In the same way, to enhance something means 
to make more of it, to emphasize it. So we're taking a natural greenhouse effect and we're making it worse. We're compounding it. We're making it bigger. All of those words that are linked with emphasis and enhancement. So as fossil fuels add to our natural greenhouse gases, which we need, there's an excess of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So what we've done is we have enhanced the number of greenhouse gases and that in turn is like putting an extra blanket on your bed. We've enhanced the insulation in your bed. We've made you warmer. Problem is, what happens when we make the earth warmer? This blanketing of the earth reduces the amount of heat escaping into space. So remember I said when the heat does uh, come from the sun, a lot of it does escape back into the atmosphere. But if we're putting this extra blanket of gases down, we're preventing this escape of heat. And so more heat is going to be trapped within the Earth's atmosphere. And what happens is the Earth as a whole is going to start getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And this phenomenon or this thing that we can observe is called global warming. So global warming is a problem, not because of the greenhouse effect, but because of the enhanced greenhouse effect. So we chucking all this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere thinking, oh, out it goes, doesn't matter, we can't see it, it's not there. But in fact, it is there. And it is causing a problem that we now know as global warming. The increase in the temperature of our Earth right across the whole globe. So what are some of the effects of global warming? I mean, so what? If the world gets hotter, well, we just wear less clothes or eat more ice cream, it doesn't matter. But it does matter because one of the big things associated with global warming is climate change. And when we talk about climate, we don't mean, oh, today it's cold, therefore how can there be global warming? We're not talking about weather. We're talking about climate, patterns of weather that exist across the earth. So have you heard people talking about the polar ice, the ice at the North Pole, the ice at the South Pole melting? Have you heard people talk about glaciers melting? What is happening is these large areas that were iced over perpetually on a long going, long term basis for all of our lives, we've known that there's snow or ice at the North Pole and at the South Pole. Well, that ice is melting. And that is going to affect the pH. And you've learned about acids and bases, and you've learned about the consequences of changing the pH in the oceans, all right? We're also going to have levels of water in our seas increasing. So we're going to see floods associated with climate change, very, very hot summers that is causing problems in terms of natural fires, drought. And on the other hand, we also have excessive storms that add to our flooding. We have tsunamis, we have hurricanes and tornadoes that cause problems. And so we can see that the whole idea of global warming is a big no-no. It's not just a case of everything getting a little bit warmer. And so, yeah, it's summertime a lot more. That's not what global warming is all about. Global warming means widespread climate changes. And if we carry on pumping all the waste products from fossil fuel burning into the air, we are going to, if we haven't already, going to bring about huge change to our climate across the earth. So guys, we need a different superhero. We still need our source of energy. We can't survive without it. But now we need to turn to renewable sources of energy. And that is what we're going to look at in our next lesson. So I've enjoyed my time with you today, but it's up. 
Join me again next time when we focus on the new superheroes, renewable energy sources. For today, goodbye. Thank you.